So mga kababayan, ito na ay eh, si Bongbong Marcos ay tinupad niya yung pangara, pangako niya, no? Gusto niyo matandaan kung sa hindi pa nakatanda sa pangako ni Bongbong Marcos, sinabi niya kasi nakaraan sa kanyang unang-unang uh, press briefing nakaraan na uh, hindi siya gagamit ng spokesperson kung maari ay siya yung haharap sa media. Yun nga in ginawa, uh, ginawa ni Bongbong Marcos ang pagharap sa media na walang ginagamit na ibang spokesperson at hindi siya nagtalaga ng spokesperson niya ha. Talagang siya yung harap at sa pagharap niya mga kababayan, hindi siya gumamit ng iya anuman nga kodigo o papel na diyan binabasa niya. Mula sa kanyang isip ang mga sinasabi niya mga kababayan. Yun ang kagandahan at makikita mo din naman dito mga kababayan at hindi siya gumamit ng teleprompter. Uh, diniscuss niya dito ang samutsaring isyu ngayon at kalakip na dito yung pinus natin kanina itong uh, uh, patungo sa agriculture ayon nga sa GM7 ay sinabi pre, uh, President Bumbum Marcos uh, sinabi niya na will be temporary assume the post of uh, agriculture chief ayon naman dito sa sa NET25 ang sabi eh, BBM pangunahan ang Department of Agriculture at yun di, dito sila kum, bumatay mga kababayan sa ginawang Frescon kanina ni Bongbong Marcos mga alas 4 ng hapon so panoorin na natin ito mga kababayan at sana wag naman kayo ha? wala naman siguro kayong may babas dito sa aking sinasabi walang masama doon baka mamaya eh, may misinterpret na naman kayo sa sinasabi ko na mayroong pangako si Bongbong Marcos na karaan na hindi siya gagamit ng spokesperson baka nakalimutan nyo So tara, panoorin na natin ito bago tayo mag-additional uh, uh, comment dito sa video na ito. Let's go. I have always said that agriculture is going to be a uh, critical and <coughs> foundational part of our economic development or economic transformation uh, is what I'm calling it from, uh, uh, from uh, as we anticipate the post-pandemic economy. And as we slowly pull out of the post-pandemic economy, hopefully that will be soon. Uh, furthermore, it is going to be uh, in response to the events in Ukraine, which have affected the Philippines' uh, agriculture and including the food supply in a very serious way. Uh, we, are, we spoke at, at, at length about the... Uh, the measures that we will have to take because we are uh, forecasting that there will be a uh, shortage or there will be an increase in uh, food prices in the next quarters that, uh, that will come simply because of the outside forces that have been impacting upon, uh, upon food supply, upon supply of feeds. Um, We have been able in the Philippines in the last few weeks to adjust to the new situation in terms of uh, the importations from the Ukraine and from Russia. But these uh, emergency measures that we have taken uh, will not be sufficient for the long run. And that's why we have to plan uh, uh, in, a more, uh, in a more thorough fashion than uh, just uh, responding. I have asked, uh, I have asked the DTI, NEDA, and of course the Department of Finance, uh, the DBM. I have asked them all to start to make uh, to make uh, uh, forecasts, uh, economic forecasts on what it is we plan, we think we will have to face uh, for the rest of this year, so that we can prepare, uh, and so that we can, despite the fact that there will be some emergency situations. Uh, hopefully not, but possibly some emergency uh, uh, situations, especially when it comes to food supply. Uh, we have uh, uh, tried to, to continue the fundamental development uh, when it comes to the economy. As to agriculture, I think that the, uh, the problem is severe enough that I have decided to take on the portfolio <coughs> of Secretary of Agriculture, at least uh, for now. And at least until we can reorganize the uh, Department of Agriculture uh, in the way that it will make it ready for the next years to come. Marami tayong mga kailangang palitan. Uh, marami tayong mga 
uh, medyo naging mga dip, mga iba't ibang opisina mm. na hindi na masyadong nagagamit o kailangan nang i, i retool para sa post pandemic. Uh, dahil nga iba na yung ating ginagawa ngayon Bumabalik tayo Or ba- going back to basics Ilang beses nyo na sa aking narinig ito Back to basics We're going back to basics And trying and we will rebuild The value chain of agriculture And that is why I thought it's important That the President take, the, uh, take that portfolio So that uh, not only to to make it clear to everyone what, uh, what a high priority we put on the agricultural sector, but also as a practical matter so that things move quickly uh, because the events of the global economy are moving very quickly. We have to be able to be agile. We have to be able to respond uh, uh, properly in a measured way uh, as soon as there is a situation that needs to be addressed. So that's essentially, uh, that's essentially Uh, what we discuss, and that is the uh, that is my announcement uh, for for today. I will take a few questions. Yun. So. Yes. Question. There are many, there are many priorities that we have to attend to simultaneously. Uh, first of all, will be to try and increase production as we come into the planting period, uh, the harvest period uh, after the after the rainy season, uh, during, before, and after the rainy season. Uh, hopefully, we can counter up some of the increases uh, in prices. You, you may have noted that. Uh, uh, Thailand and Vietnam, for example, uh, one of our uh, main sources of imported rice, have uh, decided to uh, ban uh, their rice exports, at least for now. So we have to compensate for that by in- hopefully in- by increasing production here in the Philippines. So that's one. Talino talaga the other mga priority, uh, which is equally important, although it is a long term, uh, it is a long term process, is the restructuring. Talino, of the Department of Agriculture. Um, as I have ma- mentioned many times before, many of the agencies have changed their function over the years, and uh, maybe it's time to return them. I talk about uh, the places, uh, the uh, or, uh, organizations like the NFA, the FTI, the CADIWA, uh, which we have already started to see, especially at the local level. But we have to restructure the actual um, the actual uh, uh, department uh, so as to be more responsive to uh, the global situation now when it comes to food supply. Sir, sir, um, can I just vote from yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we make your policy, sir, on open heats and mining in general? Uh, How will you ensure that the government gets a fair share in mining projects? There was a push before to increase taxes on mining, but it didn't prosper. How, how do you plan to deal with that? And also, how do you plan to boost revenue from the country? We have to we have to view mining as a national treasure, ma, ma, uh, the 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 natural resources as a national treasure for which the uh, which can help the Philippines a great deal. It is only up to us uh, to ensure that the practices that are being uh, that, that that we see in the mining operations around the country are such that they are environmentally uh, neutral. Uh, that has not necessarily been the case. I, we, we, I think we are all aware of the, uh, some of the problems that have, that have arisen before. But uh, again, uh, it, I cannot believe that here in the Philippines we cannot monitor and regulate uh, the mining is the industry sufficiently so that we can have uh, clean uh, mining. Uh, in the country. I'm sorry, I missed the last uh, last question. Sir, uh, there was a push before to increase the taxes on mining. How do you plan to, to increase the taxes on mining, sir? But it didn't prosper. How do you plan to do that, sir? Uh, it's it. Well, in the, on the taxation, we also discussed that. Um, it's not going. We we're trying to adjust it again. Um, not so that we just increase taxes on mining. Uh, what we would like to do is encourage that the value added to the raw ore 
stay in the Philippines as much as possible. Whether there should be fiscal, should there be, whether there should be fiscal measures for, in that regard is something that we haven't quite decided on, and what the levels um, those that, that that will be. But the I think the 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 um, uh, what we are trying to achieve, what we are trying to achieve, the desired result for all of this is, as I said, that instead of exporting raw ore. Uh, we export at least partially processed ore, so that may value added uh, that's left here in the Philippines. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, we understand that uh, rising food prices is uh, intrinsically connected to rising oil prices. Yeah. What are your immediate uh, response to uh, spiraling oil prices? <laughs> We just, again, it has to be focused. Uh, it's not uh, something that we, we talked about uh, the listing of even just uh, how do we do the proper listing of uh, the indigents around the country uh, we, to make sure that it is those who are truly in need. That hits upon, uh, by the by, that hits upon the uh, discussion that we have about accelerating the issuance of the national ID uh, because right now we're I think we're up to 12 million is that the correct number yeah we're up to 12 million kulang na kulang payon and all of these things like the, the giving of the ayuda uh, all of these things that we are trying we're going to digitize the bureaucracy uh, it all it all really depends upon everyone having their national ID uh, and there is a good database for the gover that the government should have so yes, so that's what uh, that's what uh, the other sir, thing. Sir, ano po from Germany is online. Sir, on another topic, lang po. Did, uh, meron na po ba kayong napili na next na DOH secretary, DMA secretary? Kasi may mga names na po na. Yes. I, I, yeah, I've, I've been more seeing some some uh, <laughs> some speculation. Uh, the the the. the, the Shortlists are getting shorter. Uh, let me put it that way. Uh, if we started with ten names, uh, a dozen names, we are down to maybe three or two in each of those departments. But we took it really department by department, um, and uh, of course health. And not not to say that the, the Department of Health is unimportant, but we are uh, coming around to that, uh, and we are. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we we'll have a, 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 a an appointee or a nominee. Uh, within the next week or so, uh, we have. To, I really want to get as many of those done uh, before the inauguration. Sir, sir, on Sir, what are your views on the rice tariffication? Um, some senators have expressed openness to amending it. What will be your view? On? Well, if there's if there's one part of the rice tariffication, uh, it the, the it is it is the. Uh, uh, the the area wherein we reinvest and the amount of funding that we reinvest into uh, into uh, our for our farmers and for mechanization and for uh, post harvest facilities, which is part of the rice tariffication, and there's 10 billion that is returned uh, to the uh, farming community. Uh, maybe we can have a look at that and uh, and see. Uh, maybe that uh, now that we are in a situation where we very much have to boost production and we very much have to uh, support the farmers, maybe we can look at that and hopefully increase it. Meron pa naman, pag nakikita man natin yung accounting doon sa rice tarification, uh, yung 10 billion na yun, kuminsan meron pang unspent. Eh. So pwede pang gamitin yun. Yes. Ano, ano, yung? Excise tax or suspension? Sa? Sa, 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 uh, because if you re re if you reduce uh, the excise taxes, that does not necessarily help those who are most in need. 
Tama. Yung talagang tinatamaan. Tama. Kasi blanket eh. So ang aking iniisip, kung sino yung mga kagad na tinamaan. Yung pinay, example, yung lumabas kagad, mga transport, uh, yung uh, mga nagpapasada, all of, all of those, tinamaan kagad, i-focus natin muna sa kanila. Tama. Uh, yung mga nangangailangan talaga. Uh, because, you know, the... Uh, Tama. The, 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 yung may namang may kaya, Uh, they can they can afford to pay even the 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 VAT. It's those who have will uh, whose livelihoods are in danger or in danger of losing their livelihoods because of the increase in the oil. Baka yun yun ang dapat natin magfocus. Don't tayo magfocus. Yeah. Sir Julie, by the from one page, according to PPNS Sara Duterte, na pag-usapan niya dito na reviewin yung K to twelve program. Mm -hmm. Sir, can we get more details? Ano yung naging instruction? To? I don't want to preempt uh, the uh, VP uh, secretary. Uh, I, I know we, we did talk about that. We talked about many of the many of the uh, current issues. Uh, ang ang uh, alo lang talaga namin before getting into without getting into too much detail uh, about what the plans are. Ang uh, pinag-usapan ng namin basta paganda. There was also the question of when we start to teach it English when we from the lingua franca to English uh, yung K-12 kung kailangan pa talaga yung K-12 uh, and uh, uh, many of the many of the other issues uh, my, ang, ang aking laging pinapaalala sa kanya is yung mga teacher kailangan alalayan ang mga teacher, kailangan i-training ang mga teacher para magandang maging trabaho nila. Ang mga teacher naman yan ang pinakamadaling turuan yung teacher eh. So I'm very confident that as long as we have a program in place uh, to support our teachers, not only in terms of their benefits, but of course that's an important part of it, but not only just in terms of their benefits, but also in terms of other support, in terms of the training, uh, in terms of the supplies, the equipment, uh, we have to, we have to uh, uh, do a lot to uh, uh, recover our um, our very good uh, grading before. Pagka tayo tinitignan ng Asia, yung literacy rate, yung pagsalita ng English, pati sa, sa, sa science, sa math, mataas tayo noon eh. Uh, <laughs> kailangan natin balikan yan. Uh, mahirap pa, mahirap mag-compete mag, uh, mag kung hindi natin, uh, hindi natin ayusin yung training ng mga kabataan natin. Tama, tama. Very good. So, bro. Yeah, I think the, 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 yan ang kasi hinihingi nila para, para papasok sila. But there are other issues before that. There are other issues before the ownership. Uh, at, at this point, marami nang pumapasok joint, joint venture. Ang mahirap sa kasi sa ownership, sa, sa, eh, hindi, pag kahit na silang mayari, magbubukas kung sila lang ang magpapatak mo, nahihirapan sila ang th things like ease of doing business, uh, um, uh, yung power supply, all of these things. So, and even the bidding process, kuminsan has to date date is question yung uh, tinatawag, yung mga tinatawag na guarantees, legislative guarantees and regulatory guarantees. Ibig sabihin, hindi magbabago yung batas habang, habang ginagawa nila yung project nila. Hindi magbabago yung regulation habang ginagawa pa lang yung project nila. Yung mga ganyang klaseng bagay. Yun ang talagang hinihingi nila. Is the, the ownership is, a, is one issue, but it's not the main one. And I think if we can take care of all of that first, uh, madali nang pumayag tayo dun sa 100% ownership. Sir, sa transportation portfolio, may nabili na kayo or possible ba na si Senart uh, mag-hold over siya? And what are your priorities natin sa transport in the next 100 days? Well, transport is going to be critical because hanggat maging maayos, eh, naging problema nga, uh, we, para, lahat ng balita, naririnig natin, mga, they call supply-side problems. Not a supply-side problem, there's supply, but there's the, it's the chain, supply chain problem. That's transport. Uh, so, hindi tayo makata-recover hanggat maayos natin yung ating transportation system. So they are very high priority. Um, as you can see, they're also living very close to the to the edge. 
kaunti lang tumaas na naman ng uh, ang crudo hindi na magpapasada uh, I think now the latest increases ang dami ng sinabi maghahanap ng ibang trabaho dahil hindi sila wala silang nakikitang para para kumita so yes so transport uh, is going to be an essential part because not only for passengers but also for uh, even more ano eh, for cargo uh, yung mga gamit, mga raw materia, pati yung mga finished product, dadalhin ito sa agriculture, nagiging naapektuhan yung agriculture, food supply naapektuhan dahil sa transport. Kaya fundamental yung transport eh, kaya kailangan na using. Kaya uh, malaking problema itong nangyari na nagtataas ang, <coughs> ang presyo ng uh, lahat ng petroleum products. Uh, wala, naman tayong, uh, wala naman tayong magawa, we just have to take whatever price we're getting but hopefully i remember in the last uh, in the last uh, oil crisis the 1973 oil crisis um nakakausap na, na, napakiusapan naman natin ang mga kaibigan natin na oil producing countries na medyo pagbigyan tayo in terms of the credit in terms of the payment period and things like that so, baka we will pursue that again. Uh, the, the diplomacy side na naman yun. I'm sorry? Lahat nung kausap kong mga ambassador, inumpisaan ko na. Inumpisaan ko na. Sinasal ba kung meron tayong pwedeng pag-usapan in terms of any, all, the, all of them who have, uh, <coughs> who have supply of gas, who have supply of, uh, of oil. Uh, I, I, I already opened the discussion with them. We have to explore na lahat. We have to explore everyone. Sir, clarify ko lang, Secretary po. Secretary of Transportation. Nakahawak ng portfolio, sir. Secretary of Transportation. Nababasa mo yung pag-iisingin. Tapos, actually, I have a fairly good idea. Yun sabay-sabay will announce it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, maraming... So, yan mga kababayan, hanggang dyan yung... First conference ni Bumbo Marcos, talagang uh, sobrang talino ni Bumbo Marcos mga kababayan, no? Sa aking ang palagay, kulang yung 6 years dito sa term niya, eh. Diba? Mga ganitong tao, mga kababayan, pagka ganito yung mamumuno, manghihinayang ka, sa, manghihinayang ka na ang kanyang termino ay 6 years lamang. Diba? Kitang-kita mo yung mga ganda, yung mga gandang sinasabi niya patungkol dun sa... Doon pa lang sa transportation, nakikita niya yung naunawaan yung driver eh. At saka doon sa tinatawag na, di ba, magkaroon kasi si Coco Pimentel ng, nagkaroon din kasi kanina si Coco Pimentel ng press conference, kung saan ay balak ni Coco Pimentel na i-discuss o tanggalin itong excise tax, eh sabi naman ni, ano, ni President Bumbo Marcos, huwag. Diba? Parang gusto niya lang i-focus doon sa mga naapektuhan. Para sa akin, tama yung decision ni uh, Bumbo Marcos. Kasi kung tatanggalin mo naman yung isisay tax talaga, ay lahat naman ay hindi talaga ma-address yung issue. Eh. Kasi hindi naman lahat yan. Eh. Kagaya ng mamahihirap. Oh. Pero kung itotok mo lang talaga kung sino nangangilang. Halimbawa, sabi niya ni Bumbo Marcos, yung halimbawa, taxi driver yung mga jeepney driver, eh sila yung tutulungan. Kasi yung halimbawa, yung mga Ayala Alabang, oh, napakaraming sasakyan, ilang thousand-thousand ng sasakyan yan. Kayang-kaya nila yan, kahit mag 200 per letter pa yan, ang yayaman-yaman mga yan eh. Di ba? Ang kawawa talaga yung susuporta. Yun ang isa sa maganda nakikita ko, na hindi ako sangayon ako din sa panukala ni Bumbo Marcos ng ganyan, pananaw niya, na talagang ipokus. Doon sa agriculture, ang ganda rin yung ano niya eh. Doon sa, ano, napakaganda iba mga kabayan na kaya nakaka, nasa, parang sa tingin ko bagamat di pa siya nakaupo pero sa isip ko parang sayang yung ano sayang mga ganitong tao nakakahinayang eh pagka uh, 6 years lang yung ano niya so yan mga kabayan at uh, nangako siya no diba ginawa niya yung uh, pangako niya na hindi siya gagamit ng spokesperson at mismo siyang sumasagot dito sa mga media na nagtatanong kita nyo naman siguro at uh, kita nyo naman siya wala siyang parang wala siyang kodigo diba? napansin nyo ba? o oh, mayroon sa akin wala eh baga man siguro mayroon siyang halimbawa sabihin natin mayroon siyang teleprompter kung baga parang na, napansin ko kasi kanina lumingon dito eh pero nakikita mo parang hindi siya hindi mo siya makikita na doon nakapokus lagi at saka parang alam niya na yung sasabihin niya parang ala tatay niya nga eh, na 
habang nasasalita ay alam niya na yung ginagawa kasi nasa isip, nasa puso niya na yung gusto niyang gawin sa bansa eh. Hindi niya na kailangan isulat sa papel kasi yung gusto niyang gawin sa bansa ay nasa puso niya na at sa naisip niya na. Ano yung mga plano niya? Talaga ang talino mga kababayan, sobra. Ang talino. Sana eh, ano pa ito si Bumbo Marcos parang ano, uh, para ma, 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 ma ano yung bansa para ma, at least aahon aahon sa kahira so yung marami pa siyang kabiniti na wala itong si congressman Marcolita tila baga ay eh, malabo kasi nanumpa na rin siya bilang uh, sagip party list pero bakante pa rin yung uh, baging DOA uh, secret, yung slot ng DOA wala pa rin siyang kumbaga wala pa tayong nabalitaan na mayroon siyang ilalagay dyan baga mamaya in the last mayroon pa kasi ilang araw, 10 days pa, hindi ako magkakamali. So, baka magkaroon ng pabubago sa isip ni Congressman Marcolita. Sana, sana tanggapin niya yung ano niya, di ba? Tanggapin niya yung kanyang position nga lang, nanumpa na eh. Mungkol ako, nanong rules ng kumilik dyan. O pwede pa bang makaroon ng substitute sa isang party list kung ito'y nanumpa na. Yun ang hindi natin alam, mga kababayan, kung pwede. umilik yung nakakaalam diyan. Na ganoon kasi nakarang araw nakita ko nanumpa na si Bo, si Congressman Marcolita bilang sagi list representative at kasama yung isang babae kasi dalawang slot na nakuha nila sa ibig sabihin dalawang representative ng partilis sa Kongreso. So kung magresign si Bumbo Marco ay si Congressman Marcolita ay eh, isang natira. So okay lang hindi ko lang alam kung kaya man pwede i-substitute niyan kung isang tao nanumpa na. yun ang hindi natin alam so yun lang muna mga kabayan uh, dinis ko so, sana walang magagalit ha sana wala namang magbawala at uh, ibabas tayo uh, ano ano so base lang tayo sa ating opinion no? pag sinabi ko sing opinion mga kabayan ayan ay nasa isa kasi ako hindi naman ako gumagami gumagawa ng script hindi naman ako nagsusulat na ito yung topic 1 topic 2 eh kasi siyempre kung ano nasa isip mo minsan yun ang ma ma masambit lang natin kasi opinion nga eh Di ba? Hindi naman hindi naman ako ba, nagbabalita na kasi kung reporter ako, halimbawa, yung mga reporter ay eh, may merong may script yung binabasa yan eh. Di ba? Ako kasi kagaya ng mga komentarista, ikaw nga parang komentarista ang dating ko. Di ba? Ang komentarista ay nagsasalita yan, nagko-comment. Kaya nga tinatawag komentarista, nagko-comment eh. Kung anong nasa isip, yun ang sasabihin. Di ba? So maraming salamat at kita kiss tayo bukas. Ingat kayo palagi at uh, maraming salamat pala sa nagsend ng star. No? Napakaraming nagsend ng star. Umabot ako ng 3,000. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Ano ba ito? Uh, ito. Wala ata. No? Cheer. So yan. Kita kiss tayo bukas mga kababayan. Thank you.